So hello again there, welcome to my channel where I talk about anything recreational and motivational about health and if you might like my videos please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and click that bell button for new videos you will be notified. Anyways, let's get on with the video and hope that you enjoy. So hi there, now let's talk about the index aside from the glycemic index which I have already discussed in the video link above and the video in the description below. As always, I have a disclaimer here. I am not a dietitian, physician, or a doctor, but I've taken my dieting level that I still am in good condition, still maintaining my weight and health after a weight loss diet. I do it by meticulously tracking my results. That's why if your dream is to have the body you always wanted to have, then you've come to the right channel. Well, that is my mission. Anyways, to the video. So first, let's recall what is the glycemic index. Let me tell you a brief summary of it. It is a system that ranks food from 1 to 100 based on the effect on the blood sugar levels. They are usually in per 100 gram basis. Also, the glycemic load is the glycemic index times the weight of your actual food. Now then, let's go to our topic which is the insulin index. The insulin index of a food represents elevation of the insulin concentration in the blood during the 2 hour period after the food is ingested well the insulin index can be more useful than the glycemic index or glycemic load because certain foods such as lean meats causes an insulin response despite of the fact that they contain very low amounts of carbohydrates so if you ask me what insulin is it is the hormone made by our pancreas that allows the body to use the sugar or the glucose from our eaten carbohydrates. So if your insulin is activated, your body will absorb sugar. Then if that amount of calories is already enough for your body, it is time that the body will create the excess fat from, from this excess carbohydrates or sugars or calories. The link to insulin is also the continuous hungry feeling you're having. So if you want to avoid a lot of meals half in your diet, be sure to avoid a lot of insulin response. Now that is where the insulin index will help you. So now really, how can we know the insulin index of these foods? Good news! An article visually and clearly explained about the insulin index or load of foods. Practically according to the article, carbohydrates is unmistakably have a large impact on insulin. Well, that's a given. Moreover, the protein intake also incite an insulin response. I will link the article on the description down below if you want to see it, but I will explain it now. This equation is stated in the article that insulin load same as the glycemic load which means that it is already a sum of the carbohydrates in the food itself the insulin load meaning it is already in the form of your food same as the glycemic load so the insulin index is equivalent to carbohydrates in grams minus the fiber of your food plus a 56 percent from the protein in grams. So I repeat carbohydrates minus the fiber since the fiber cannot be digested naturally by our body plus the 56% of the protein content in grams. So for example, I have given you this rice. A rice of 200 grams or equivalent to one cup of rice. Now based on the article of nutrition data that self Rice has 57 grams of carbs, 0 fiber, and 5 grams of protein. So, in the equation, apply this. So, the insulin load is equivalent to 57 minus 0 plus 5 grams multiplied by 0.56 is equivalent to 59.8 grams. That will be the insulin load. Now, you may ask me, 
So what are the parameters of the right engine load? So hear me now. The engine load will vary from person to person. See a small woman aiming for a weight loss using lower protein ketogenic diet can have as low as 40 grams per day of engine load while a larger active and looking build muscles it have an insulin load of 300 grams per day so why then have high insulin load for bodybuilders because they are actively using the protein for their muscle development on the contrary if you eat a lot of protein and you're staying in the couch all day long that will be some serious increase of your body fat once you inside muscle breakdown through exercise fat are the only ones used as fuel what i mean by fat is the body fat anyways if you want to have an issue in load with yours i will state my as basis for your reference so i have a height of five feet and six and a half inches or 168.9 centimeters Insulin load that works for me while still losing weight is in the range of 150 to 200 grams per day of insulin load. So women typically have a lower insulin load to induce the weight loss they want to. From the article again, one woman stated that she has insulin load range from 80 to 75 grams per day. Now let's apply the rice we computed earlier. So it has 59.8 insulin load for 200 grams of rice or one cup. So if you eat a cup of rice for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, that would be a whopping 179.4 grams of insulin load. Not to mention the other sweets you eat for snacks. It may rise up until 300 grams of insulin load. So if you eat a lot of carbs such as rice, don't expect to lose weight. That's a lot of insulin response and excess fat in the future. So to manage that, track your food or even track your insulin load. So anyways, let me give you this list of mine of some foods that are commonly eaten and their insulin loads. So here it is, table up. The rice of one cup again is equivalent to 59.8 grams of insulin load. The oats of 90 grams has 62 grams of insulin load. That's why I eat oats of 30 grams only per meal. An apple of 250 grams, which is the palm size apple, is equi has equivalent of 29 grams of insulin load. The pork chop, which is the only lean part not including the fat, for 40 grams has 6 grams of insulin load. The avocado at the palm size of your hand has 6 grams of insulin load also. Potatoes of 100 grams has 20 grams of insulin load. The eggs, one egg at 55 grams has 4 grams of insulin load. Drumstick chicken, which has no breading or oil at 73 grams has 8 grams of insulin load. Now, the drumstick which is cooked with breading and cooked in a frying oil at 80 grams has 11 grams of insulin load. Anyways, you can still continue making your own insulin load list of foods by using the equation from the article which is insulin load is equivalent to carbohydrates minus fiber plus the 56% of protein. So anyways, to end this video, I will give the following pointers for your diet and also helping you in using the insulin index. So number one. If your blood glucose and insulin levels are high, then you should work to decrease your insulin load in your diet. Number two, as the insulin load of your diet decreases, you should see your blood glucose level decrease also, and your appetite decreases, and your ketone levels goes up. Still remember, ketones are energy burned from your body fat which is said to be more efficient than the energy eaten from your food so number three is number three is if you are still not seeing the results you want 
whether it be the weight loss or any other goals like glucose or insulin. The next step is to try participating in an intermittent fasting like mine to further reduce your insulin and blood glucose as well as to mitigate your overall food intake. Number 4. As your blood glucose starts to normalize, you can start to focus on more nutrient-dense foods with a lower energy density that may be helpful in your weight loss goal. Well, as I always say, when you are dieting, you should have nutrition with it. Dieting and nutrition are one. Having a dirty diet can only put your body at risk. Anyways, this is it for this video and hope that you enjoy. And if you like my channel too, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for many videos to come. Also, click that bell to notify you if a new video comes out. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, eat better, track better, and be better. This is Ray, signing off. Thank you.